So let's just look at some examples first. Before we solve this, sometimes it's nice to see what could happen. First of all, what's their profit at $20? They sell how many? 300. Do you see that the profit would be 6,000? I guess this is assuming there's no cost whatsoever. Someone has donated these and it's all profit. We can look at maybe a better word for this one would have been revenue. But the, we won't worry about that right now. So what could be another price that they could charge? And how many would buy if they did that? 15 or 25, right? You could go either up $5 or down $5. If you went up $5 to 25, what happens? Less students buy it, so only 270 now, right? And is it better for your profit or worse? So we can take our calculator out. 25 times 270. Ooh, this is better for us. We should charge more. What happens if you charge less? times 330 should they lower the price no they're gonna make 49.50 so raising the price seems to make the school more money should they raise it again well we could check what would be my next price that I would check $30 how many people would buy it then 240. So every time you go up $5, the idea is that you go down 30. Let's check this one. 30 times 240. Ooh, it's even better. Now, one of the ways you can solve a math problem is exactly like this. You try different things. Go up and down and get a sense for it. But in mathematics, if we can solve an equation, that we know for sure this is the best answer, that's more powerful. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up an equation, but the nice thing, I'm going to start with words. Would you agree that the profit, what did we do? We put in the cost and then we did the number sold. That's what we did, right? But now we have to come up with a way to do algebra for this. We don't know how many times we should add the $5. Should we add the $5 once? Should we add the $5 twice? Seems like twice. Should we add it a third time? We could keep trying. What we're going to do is we're going to define a variable x. In this case, I'm going to let x equal the number of times you increase the price by five dollars. And now I'm going to take my words and try to put it into algebra. So in algebra, we don't like, how about P for profit? Are you okay with that? Now the cost started at $20, and then you could add $5 as many times as you wanted. So if X is zero, then my cost would be just $20. If X is one, I'd get my $25. Now the number sold. We start off with 20 selling 300. And what happens every time we increase the price by $5? We have to subtract 30 people every time we do that. The hardest part of this question is this setup and understanding it. So again, that's why I started with numbers, because I think it's easy to understand, okay, 
I started with 20 people selling 300. $20, sorry, selling 300. Now that would be when X is zero. Every time I went up by $5, I had to go down by $30. So I can't just say X is going up by five because then I'd have to do a different number here that is more complicated. So instead, I just call it a single price increase of five dollars, so five times x, then 30 less people buy. And if we multiply this out, now the rest becomes review. So 20 times 30, 300, that's 6,020 minus 600x plus 1,500x, and then five minus 150x squared. We have some like terms here, but first of all, can you see that this is a parabola that opens down? How do I know it opens down? My first number is positive. Why is it opening down? Because it's what's in front of that x squared. That x squared is what tells you, if I'm going to put that number first, I'm going to combine these as like terms. And if we can find the vertex of this, can you see that that will find a maximum? And it will find a maximum profit, because the maximum that you find is whatever variable or thing you're looking for. So I go to my complete the square technique, first our part two, which is changing the standard form. Again, on your formula sheet, you have this standard form on there. We notice the A value is factored out. So I take that negative 150 out. This is easy. Not quite so easy, but not too bad. How many 150s are there in 900? Six. And it would be negative because I took out a negative. And then you still have your plus 6,000 outside. You're going to have to complete the square. So there's going to be a space to complete the square and a space to compensate. That negative six is your hint. It has to be minus three. Which would mean there would need to be a plus nine here. Which means I have technically subtracted 1,350. So to compensate, I would have to add 1,350 giving me 7,350 here, and my vertex is 3, 7,350. This becomes the max profit. This is the x <coughs> that gives you the max. But what was the x? And this is why it's important in questions like this that we go back to the beginning and say, what did it, is x the price? This is where if you're working for this company, you're going to get fired. You're like, I did the math. We're going to sell the sweatshirts for $3. And then what's going to happen is you're going to get fired. Because that's not very good. What did that 3 mean? We go back up. 3x is the number of times you increase the price by $5. So we're going to increase the price by $5 three times. If I put a 3 in for x, this part, and this is why it's nice, my cost is actually going to be $35. The number sold, if x is 3, will be 210. So let's write all of those things out. So that x value, you have to take it in its context to figure out what 
Now, if we scroll back up, you're pretty logical human beings. After doing a couple of guesses and check checks, you saw that the going down wasn't working for us. Going up was making us more money. Then we went up to 30. You probably would have checked 35 next, right? And multiplied that and got our 73.50. And then you'd be like, ooh, it keeps going up. What would you check next? You'd probably check 40. And if you did 40 times 180, you get the 7,200 again. And you know how parabolas are symmetrical? It's like, ooh, you have symmetry between 30 and 40. Where's the average between 30 and 40? 35. So you could have, we were very close to actually getting the answer. Okay. But what's some problems with this? We're making an assumption. We're making an assumption that it's a parabola and it is symmetrical. How do you know for sure something's a parabola? You don't. Right? Right now, we're like, well, we're studying parabolas, so that seems to make sense, right? But in real life problems, when you come across something, it's not like, oh, by the way, you're going to have a problem in your real life, and we're going to give you some homework right the week before the problem actually happens to prepare you for it, right? So you have to, we don't for sure know. It seems logical with the symmetry, but that's just something unique with parabolas. There are x cubed functions out there that aren't symmetric. But once you create the equation, oops, maybe, yes, there it is. Once we create the equation and we multiply it out, we saw that it was a parabola. Okay, so in your homework, you can circle 10 and 11. Okay, so to recap, we did this. We started with the area one because it was a bad question because it had exactly the same numbers as the last one. Only thing different, I think it changed from meters to feet, which didn't affect your math, and a river from a barn before. So this one was identical. Now this one was new. Find two positive numbers whose sum is 14. So you make one number x, and because you know they have to add up to 14, the other one would be 14 minus x. Some people do this. Okay? Some people call the second number y. And then when they write out the sum is 14, they're like, oh, that means that y has to be 14 minus x. And this is our goal, to have only one variable rather than two variables. Otherwise, we can't solve something. So then the sum of the squares. I used s. For that, I want to find the minimum sum of squares. So my first number is getting squared, and my second number is getting squared. Now, before I can change to standard form, I'm going to have to multiply the one side out, combine my like terms, and now I have the general form of the quadratic function. So I could change it to standard form. by doing our steps to complete this way. Factor out that 2. The 14 then gives us a hint that it has to be x minus 7 squared. And we can find the minimum. I'll put up the answer. <coughs> to the fairy question. So you can check how you did. 
There we go. It's a moment in time. We picture ourselves in Illinois. See if I get in trouble on YouTube from NASA. Every time we do, can't mess that one. Good, good. Let me just finish that one up. Kind of looks like an eyeball. Gotta be close to that explosion part. see that's super bright it's oh it looks like it's really close to come on come on yes kaboom my eyesight is gone All right, back to the question here so you can copy it down. Next one is the orchard, the apple one. I have put up the answer for the apple one. So you can check your work. Lots of people got this already. The next one is the bus one. I did. Oops. When I did the bus one, I went to decimals. Some of you went to cents. I did one decimal zero zero one dollar minus point zero five cents, and worked with that. Then my answers. When the x is five. You're taking off 25 cents, the price should be 75 cents. So that one I left to, towards the end because it was a little bit more complicated. And then the last one is the first one, which I'm picking as the hardest one for you to try at the end. Oh, that's <laughs> 
So there's the answer to the first one. Of course, these are all on, going to be on the video, so if you want to check any of them afterwards, you can. Isn't the first one literally the same thing we did on the other scene? It is, but this one had a cost, made it more realistic. Because you had to say, now the individual profit is only $10. Plus the increase. I didn't account for that. Yeah, I didn't account for the cost. I would say, let's just do this whole thing.